these polishes organized, but while I'm sitting here getting them organized, I'll chit chat for a minute. I wanted to film this video like an hour ago, but I had to wait for the delivery person who apparently couldn't find my apartment. So she just drove around in a circle for 30 minutes without like being, without sending me like a, hey, I can't find your apartment. So I'm just going to keep driving around aimlessly in rush hour traffic until I find your apartment. Is that cool? And then my phone was about to die. Oh my God. I just want to film this video. We're going out of town in a few days. And so I wanted to try and get a video up before then. So we shall see if, uh, if that happens, if I can get this particular video all uh oh that's open that could have been bad that could have been bad so yeah we'll see if uh if i can get this video all up and loaded by the by the time we leave what have you guys been up to you guys got any uh any vacations coming up you guys heading out of town for anything we're not doing anything exciting we're going home to florida for a few days my sister is graduating, so we're going to go do that, and I didn't plan enough time. So we're only really going to be there for like a day or two of actual like sightseeing. So I don't even know if I'm going to be able to like get a beach day in, which I'm going to be very unhappy if I don't, because it's really the only reason I go back to Florida is because I go to the beach, because the Texas beaches are not great. So hopefully we can schedule some beach time. Okay, is that everything? I think that's everything. Let's get this going. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. So today we're gonna be going over some of the polishes or all of the polishes that I picked up during the Zoya Earth Day sale. So spoiler alert, if you watched my Zoya, what's on my Zoya wish list, this will, this might be a little boring um, just because I, I think I pretty much picked up all of the polishes or most of the polishes that I talked about in that video. So spoiler alert. Um, but what I am going to do is, so in that last video, I kind of talked about some of the reasons why I didn't buy those or why I had hesitated on buying some of those polishes and, you know, why I waited so long to get them and some of my issues with why I hadn't bought them yet and all that jazz. So in this video, A, we're going to be talking about all the polishes that I picked up during the Earth Day sale and B, we're also going to be pulling out some polishes from my collection and comparing them and I'm going to show you swatch photos so you can get an idea as to how correct I was, were the polishes that I thought were going to be close, were they close, that sort of thing. So I picked up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, I think I picked up 12 in the Earth Day sale, so let's go ahead and jump in. And I do apologize, I uh, I just got home from work and as you saw in the intro, I wanted to film this video like an hour ago and I just stood outside for like 30 minutes, so I'm, I can't tell in the viewfinder, so I'm hoping I'm not all sweaty and gross, but I don't have time I'm trying to work with this daylight before we head out of town. So let's go ahead and jump in. So first ones I'll talk about are some of the nude polishes I picked up. So the first one, that I will talk about. I saw this one. This one had never really been on. I don't think I talked about this one in the wish list video. Um, this one just happened to pop on my radar because of the Bridal Bliss collection that Zoya promoted. They didn't release anything really new except for one polish out of that collection, but they basically did a bunch of promotion for bridal, their bridal collection, and so this particular polish was featured in it. It had never really been on my radar as a polish I needed to pick up because I have a whole bunch of these kind of like skin tone color pinks, but I saw a bunch of people reviewing them and saying, or reviewing it and saying that they liked this particular polish, so I thought I would go ahead and pick it up, and that is Avril. And so... Avril, again, like I just mentioned, it's kind of a blush tone, like skin, skin tone pink. Uh, formula is a little bit thin. This took me three coats to get opaque, so not the greatest formula, but it's not terrible by any means. It's still pretty good. Um, this is pretty close to some polishes I already have in my collection, so the ones that are pretty close that I will show you here are going to be... Let me get these in order here. Nope. There we go. So here we've got the polishes that I have that are pretty close. So what we've got here is going to be um, 
to your left, this is uh, Portia. And to your right, this is uh, Kennedy. And so as you can see here, um, the two here on the sides, both Kennedy and Portia, both have a little bit more white to them. Um, I would say that Avril here in the center is a little bit more, um, a little bit more of a warmer pink. These other ones are a little bit um, cooler, I guess, just because of the white in them. The formulas on Kennedy and Portia, I think, are a little bit better, just because I thought Avril's was a little bit runny. But like I said, it's not a terrible formula by any means, but if we're comparing them, I would say that Kennedy and Portia both have um, a little bit better formulas. But that is that. So that is Avril, and I'm glad I picked it up. It's a nice color. Um, I don't know if I really necessarily needed it, although I don't tend to wear Kennedy and Portia very often just because these, like, I wouldn't call these bubblegum, but like those pinks that have a little bit of white in them aren't necessarily my favorite. I usually go for these kind of like skin tone color pinks, so I'm kind of glad that I picked this up just because I don't really wear these other ones too often. So that again is Avril. And then the next one that I picked up that I did talk about in my last video is Brittany. And Brittany, which you won't be able to see here because the bottle kind of hides it a little bit, but this is again another kind of like skin tone, warm pink. It is a satin, so you can wear it both. Um, it, it's gonna dry down to a satin, so that's semi matte finish. Um, but you can put a top coat over it and make it shiny, so, or you can put a matte top coat on it and make it matte. Um, so yeah, Brittany. As I talked about, I wore this in my last weekly manicures video that you saw. Not the greatest formula, I believe it was three coats. It has a little bit of some self-leveling issues, so not the greatest satin formula. Um, out of the bunch, I really, really liked the collection, um, the, sat the satin collection, all the formulas were pretty good. This one, not so great, not terrible by any means, but just, when you're dealing with Zoya's, when you get one that's kind of like a little bit weird, you're just like, what? Um, so it's definitely, compared to other you know brands and stuff, the formula is not terrible, but compared to Zoya's usually impeccable formula, it's a little bit on the th like just difficult side to work with. So and the two polishes I'm gonna show you up against Brittany are going to be, again, Avril, which I just picked up. And the other one is going to be my, one of my top favorite Zoya's, which is Rue which is one of the reasons, ah, which is one of the reasons why I didn't pick up this polish in the first place because I thought Rue and Brittany were going to be pretty close, which as you'll see here from the swatch photo, they pretty, they, they, they are pretty darn close. Um, I would say Rue just has like a bit more brown to it than uh, Brittany. Why can't I hold these today? Um, and then you'll see here that Avril, even though in the bottle this they look it looks relatively close to the other two, you'll see her in the swatch photo. It comes up almost like a peachier pink. So definitely, um, definitely not a dupe by any means. And uh, these two are pretty close. I don't know if you necessarily need both of them, especially considering the Britney formula is a little a little uh, difficult to work with. Um, but like I said, the Rue is just like a tad bit darker. So that again is Britney. And then moving right along, I'm going to show you another, this is my last kind of like nudie pink polish that I picked up, and this is Jill. And Jill again, I held out on just because I thought it looked pretty close to Rue. It's kind of the same, you know, like this one's, a, this one looking at it now in the bottle, now that I have it, it is slightly darker um, than Rue, and you'll see her from the swatch photo. It's definitely got a lot more brown in it than Rue does, so there's Rue there for you. So it almost comes up a little mauve-y, like it's almost got... Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so yeah, you can see here that Jill is definitely a lot more of a brownish color. Um, definitely not even like blush toned in my opinion, so they look a lot closer in the bottle than they do in as you'll see here in the swatch photo. So that is those two. The other ones that I want to compare them to, this one came out recently in the fall time. This is Presley up against Jill. So Presley is a little bit darker on the nail than it is in the bottle. This um, is a little bit more of like a mauve purple, but I just wanted to show you the color comparison. So definitely you can see the brown. You can definitely see the brown there in Jill compared to that. And then the last one that I will show it up, show it to you up against is Brigitte. And... I would say these two are probably the closest out of the four that I'm showing you here. Um, but as you can see here, they're definitely still not super close. It's just, they're kind of in the same tone, but I would definitely um, say Brigitte is a little bit more of a, um, 
purple whereas you can still see how much brown is in Jill so really love I really really loved this uh, particular color so I'm, I'm really glad I picked it up because it's definitely not close to Rue and I thought it was a beautiful formula I really like this polish so that again is Jill and then moving along into some purples the uh, so did I pick this one up no so I noticed a couple other people got some, depending on how many polishes you bought, I think Zoya threw in some little like perk type things. So I've noticed a lot of people have been getting um, like a, li uh, a little set of like the naked manicure um, thing for free in their purchases. I haven't seen anyone else get this particular perk, which is what I got. I got a little trio of polishes. And as you can see here, um, one of them I already have, which is Tara which is just kind of like a uh, like deep berryish kind of uh, like a deep purple color with a little bit a little bit of a reddish purple so I already have this in my collection um, but the other two I've never heard of and I don't know where they came from or what they were for but um, the other two that I got in this little perk package um, this is um, Violet and then this one is Marion and so I'll show you Marion because I don't have anything else to compare it to. Um, Marion, I thought it kind of comes across a little duochrome in the bottle, but on the nail, which 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 tends to happen with a lot of Zoya's kind of like duochrome polishes. They always look duochrome in the bottle and then you get them on the nail and you're like, this is not duochrome. Um, but yeah, so it has like a little bit of some qualities of a duochrome as you can see kind of here even though my lights starting to wane um, it does have some gold up in the corners of the bottle but it's mostly this kind of like silvery purple color and so when you put it on the nail it uh, it's definitely not you in the bottle this looks more um, metallic but when you actually put it on the nail it almost comes off a kind of like foily type finish so I was going to compare this to some of the other duochromes I have in my collection but since this comes off more of a foil rather than a metallic. I didn't want to show you them because I just didn't think they were comparable enough. So this was an interesting color. And like I said, I've never heard of this polish. I don't know where it happened to have come from. So if you happen to know, let me know in the comments below because I had never heard of it. So that again is Marion. And then the other one that I picked up or the other one that came in that little, du that little trio is Violet. And Violet is a dusty kind of medium purple. Shockingly, I don't have anything relatively close to this in my collection. So the one, um, the two that I can show you that were, I actually have four, but um, this is going to be, I can only hold three at a time. So I'll show you the other one here in a second. So this here is Trudith, which came out in the spring, uh, spring collection recently. And then the one here to the, um, to the right is Odette. So as you can see here, definitely a lot more of a like cooler purple. You've got, um, a little bit of warmness in these two here to the side so surprisingly I thought this was going to be pretty close to both of those but definitely not and then the other one that I have to show it to you up against is uh, Malia and Malia I feel like is the closest just because it's cooler um, but like you can see here it does have a little bit um, it's a little bit brighter of a purple so really nice formula again i don't know where this came from or what it has to, or you know what it is from but it's really pretty so i'm glad i have a little trial size of it it's an actually really pretty purple shockingly i didn't have anything comparable to it in my collection so that again is violet and the moving right along i will show you the green that i picked up which is tilda which we talked about in the last video really glad i finally grabbed this even though i just don't think it's something i'm gonna wear very often i should um I've been meaning to start a series. I don't know if I'm going to film it, but I want to do a series of polishes in my collection that I, that stamp. So I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I kind of want to start just pulling out because I feel like I don't want to keep wasting money. Not saying I'm wasting money, but I don't want to keep investing all this money in stamping polishes when I feel like I probably have polishes in my collection that stamp. Unfortunately, the ones that I've pulled out so far have been not great with stamping, so I've been a little hesitant to just like randomly pull out polishes just because nothing nothing is worse than being right in the middle of a right in the middle to almost finishing a manicure and then you go to stamp something on top of it and it just totally screws up and you have to start all over again. So I've been burned a couple times with just like random polishes that I pull out of my collection and I think to myself like oh yeah that'll definitely stamp and then I go to stamp and I'm just like 
and then I get frustrated and then I don't want to ever do it again. <laughs> so in an effort to not do that, I kind of want to start going through my collection and start getting a list of polishes that I have tested and know stamp. So that way in the future, when I'm going to do a stamp, I already know what polishes stamp and I don't have to have this frustration every time I'm doing a manicure. So like I said, I don't know if I'm going to be able to film that it might be way into the future, but that's on my mind. So the reason I mention that is because Tilda, like, even though it's not a color I think I will wear as a manicure all the time, I think this could be possibly something that I could stamp with. So fingers crossed, it was a decent enough formula. So I would like, I think this would definitely be a really cool stamping polish. So the ones that I have to compare this to for you are Ness and Jace. And Ness is going to be over here to your left and Jace is going to be over here to your right. So definitely uh, no comparisons here. Ness is definitely more of like um, a jade green. So it's coming up a little bit more blue in the camera than I would like it to be. It's definitely a little bit more green. Um, this is kind of, I don't know if I love that color right there. I think it's looking in the viewfinder. I think it's off just just slightly. Yeah, it's making it look a little bit more blue toned on the, in the viewfinder here. So, um, but yeah, so this is more of like a jade green that's Ness here to your left. And then Jace over here to the right is more of a grassier green. And uh, the formula on this is very thin. I think I tried to stamp with this one time and failed miserably. It's a really nice green. I find this a little bit more wearable than, um, than say maybe Tilda, but I really liked Tilda on my nails. I thought it was pretty. I just don't know if I can wear it all the time. It's, I don't know if it's really an office appropriate color that I can wear all the time, um, but I thought it was a really pretty color. And again, maybe it could come in handy with stamping. So that again is Tilda. And then keeping with the green kind of theme. So I did end up picking up Wednesday. I did end up picking up Wednesday and I'm really glad I did. I actually really like it. It's a nice kind of, as you guys mentioned in the comments last time, a very nice kind of muted turquoise. I don't know if turquoise is the right one, but a nice muted, it's bright, but it's still kind of muted compared to some other colors. So the one I will compare it to, which is the one I was concerned it was too close to is Bevan. And while Bevan is, uh, is also a muted um, color, you can see here that Wednesday is still a little bit brighter. Bevan's one of my favorite colors um, to wear on my nails. I think it's a really nice, uh, kind of neutral shade when it comes to like this greeny type color. So you can definitely see here, uh, if you don't wear a lot of these colors, I don't know if this is necessary. I think these might be too close for you, but they're definitely not super close. So they, I can warrant having them both in my collection. So Bevan is just slightly bit, slightly more muted, um, but they're kind of similar in tone. So that's Bevan and Wednesday. And then the bright one, which is not Zoya, but it's the closest thing that I had. This is Two Yacht to Handle by China Glaze. And that just gives you a comparison to how, um, cause Two Yacht to Handle is a pretty bright kind of like, um, you know, aqua shade. And so you can see up against here, let me take Bevan down real quick. So you can see here um, with Wednesday that it, you know, it's, it's still kind of a, a turquoisey bright color, but compared to like this, because this China Glaze is almost kind of neon-esque, as you'll see here from the swatch photo. So it's definitely not super bright, but it is bright with just like a slight bit of dustiness to it. So it's really pretty. So that again is Wednesday. And then I will move into one more set of neutrals here. Yes, maybe, who cares anyway? Uh, so I ended up picking up Caitlyn. It is pretty. It's a little bit darker than I thought it was going to be. Still pretty. Um, with a, but it'll be nice. Maybe it's just because it's also not really wintry fall time, which is when I would probably wear a shade like this. So maybe I'm just like not really in the mood for this type of color, but it definitely was pretty, really nice formula. The two that I can compare, I will compare these two for you is um, August and Kelly, which Kelly I thought was going to be the closer of the two. And as you'll see here, and as you'll see from the swatch photo, Kelly surprised me. It ended up being a lot darker than I, um, than I thought. I mean, it's, I, it always is dark, you know, when I put it on the nails and maybe just because it's springtime and I haven't worn a dark color in a while, it seemed a little darker to me than normal. Um, but yeah, when you compare it up to these other two, it just looked really, really dark on the nails. So you've got Kelly here to the side, similar in tone, but, um, Kelly is definitely a lot more darker, but you can definitely see the purple, um, the purple tints here to both of those. And then you've got August here. August definitely leans a little bit more blue to me, although you can't really tell here um, in the video just because these two are so much more um, 
purple toned than than August, but that is your comparison there. So August ends up looking a little bit more um, kind of a neutral gray in this kind of setting when it's up against something like like Caitlyn here. So, but really pretty colors. I enjoyed Caitlyn very much, so I'm glad to have that in my collection. And then I did end up picking up Lorna. No, where's Lorna? I did end up picking up Lorna after several people suggested I pick it up. I do like it. But I do have some, although I will say I thought I had comparisons in my collection, but in the bottle, these look a lot closer than they actually do in real life, as you'll see here from the swatch. So this is Lorna. It's a really nice, um, it's like a magenta base, some really nice kind of like similar, um, similar colored sparkle there. I'm losing my light. There's a little bit of the sparkle there. It looks a little darker in the bottle than it actually ends up being on the nail, which I think is why I hesitated on getting it because I do have, so I'll show you, the one that I thought was going to be close to it is Noir. And in the bottle, since this looks so dark, I thought Noir was going to be really close, but as you can see here from the swatch, Noir is much darker on the nail. Um, and you can see the shimmers here are slightly different. Noir is just a little bit more red toned, um, whereas Lorna is just a little bit more purple. Not terribly different, but there is that little bit of difference. Um, but yeah, so these look somewhat similar in the bottle, but the finish on these are totally different. So pretty surprised with that because they look pretty close in the bottle. And I don't really care for the formula on Noir. Um, although I liked it better than, I remember when I first wore it, I totally, I didn't like it at all. This time around, it wasn't terrible. Maybe it's thickened up a little bit since it's been sitting on my shelf for a little while. Um, but those are, that's Noir and Lorna. The other one that I just recently got that I thought was going to be close was Carter. And Carter definitely is a lot more purple. And as you can see there, you can see the red tone of the, come on, window. Uh, killing me. There you go. So yeah, there's a little bit of pinkness to uh, to Lorna there compared to the purple here in Carter. Um, but yeah, Carter ends up being a lot brighter looking on the nail and a lot more purple as this one ends up looking a little bit darker on the nail. And then the last one that's been randomly sitting in my collection forever, which ended up not looking really close, but I thought I'd add it anyway. This is Nova. And Nova is not a pixie dust. It's just kind of a like glitter polish. It's a... Uh, a little bit close with the um it's similar in color it's just the finishes are totally different so this is a lot this is just like you know a base with glitter in it whereas you know obviously this is a pixie dust but they were kind of close in color so i thought i would throw them together so that again is um nova so yeah all four of those are kind of close so you definitely don't need them all in your collection but they definitely weren't dupable by each other which was shocking because i think you know where did they all go? I think it's just funny because when you hold them all up together, they all look like they're pretty close together. But looking at the swatch photo here, you can definitely tell on the nail that they don't look that much, um, that much. I can't talk today. They don't look that close in color. <laughs> all right. And then next up is going to be, this is one I didn't talk about in my wish list because I forgot about it. Um, I've been wanting this for a while. I just, it totally slipped my mind to talk about it in the video. This is Waverly. Waverly, again, another pixie dust that I'm adding to my collection. And this is a beautiful, um, I don't know if this is like a, I don't know if this is what they call like a sapphire. Is that like a sapphire blue? I want to say, um, it's a little bit of a deeper base with this beautiful kind of like sapphire uh, glitter here. And again, it's pixie dust, so it's going to end up being matte on the nail. I don't love this matte, so I think every time I do wear this, it's going to be with a top coat. Um, I just, it doesn't sparkle enough on the nail for me when it's matte. And when I, the only time I'll wear it matte is if it still looks kind of sparkly on the nail. This just looks a little flat on the nail for me as a matte. So I will probably end up putting a top coat over this. The one to compare this to for you and also for Miss Kendra who hasn't picked this up yet, this is a uh, dream here next to it. And so you can see here that Waverly is slightly darker than dream. Um, the finishes are going to be a totally different because you've got a scattered hollow here to your right and a pixie dust here to the left. 
Um, and the glitters are a little bit different. Um, so you've got it, you've obviously a scattered hollow, like I just mentioned. This is just gonna be like a blue, um, a blue micro glitter in Waverly here, but I think the colors are pretty close. So I don't know if you necessarily, I haven't swatched these yet, but I'm pretty sure that Waverly is gonna look just slightly darker on the nail. And you're gonna get a lot more of like rainbow, that rainbow holographic where you're not gonna get that with this, but they're pretty close, so. That again is Dream and Waverly. All right, and just rounding out uh, my last three here, I did end up picking up Amy. Again, kind of similar to Tilda. I don't know if it's something I'm gonna wear all the time because it is quite bright on the nail. I don't think this would be a stamping polish, but it is really, really pretty. So I'm glad I added it to my collection. I just, uh, it is a little bright. So as you can see here, it's in this really nice kind of reddish orange base. And it's got this really beautiful orange shimmer that goes throughout it. Um, it ends up looking kind of glass flecky on the nail, um, but the orange just, oh, it just lights it up so well. It just looks so bright and vibrant on the nail. Loved this, really nice formula on it too. Um, I don't really have anything super comparable, obviously, because it's like this fiery orange, just not something I have in my collection a whole lot. But just to get an idea of how bright of an orange this is, I'm gonna show it up against uh, Channing. And so Channing has a little bit of orange to it, um, but it's definitely in a darker base. But I just want to give you an idea of how bright this orange is. It's so vibrant, so beautiful. I really enjoyed this more than I thought I was going to, um, just because this isn't, you know, my usual cup of tea. But I really thought this was super pretty. So that again is Amy. And then the last four, or the last two that I'm going to show you are kind of similar. So I did end up picking up... Brighton, which was the one that they released in the Bridal Bliss that in the Bridal Bliss collection that was new. It's this nude scattered hollow. Not the greatest formula on this compared to the other scattered. It's very thin. Um, definitely needs three coats to be opaque, but it is pretty. Sorry, my lighting is starting to go, so hopefully you're not gonna be able to see the scattered hollow very well, but. It is very nude. Um, when I the reason I held off on this is I wasn't sure how nude this was compared to some other ones. So who I will show this up against is Godiva, which is the one I thought was going to be really close. And they definitely are, I think. And this is you know being really super picky. Um, I would say Godiva has like you can't tell here from the bottles. In the bottles, these look pretty close, but um, since this has a scattered hollow and this has more of like a gold shimmer, Godiva ends up coming off a little bit more yellow toned on the nail than um, than Brighton does. So they're they're pretty close comparison as far as like a base color. It's just that. Um, as you can see here, that gold shimmer, it just gives it a little bit of a yellow tinge to it. So I think that's really what sets them apart. I don't think you necessarily need both of them in your collection. Um, Godiva also doesn't have the greatest formula. It's not bad, but you know, these both don't have super great formulas, but they're really, they're pretty. It just depends what you're, what you're in the mood for, you know, gold shimmer, holographic. So that's those two. And then the other one that I did end up buying was Ziv. And uh, Ziv is their kind of gold uh, foil. And so this is pretty. I haven't swatched this one yet up against uh, Tomoko here. So I don't know how comparable these are only, you know, on the fingers. I'm just showing you here in the, um, you know, on the video, but you've got Tomoko here. Tomoko is a little bit more of a silver gold, if that kind of makes sense. So. Um, Ziv ends up, they, most people call this kind of like an antique gold, and so compared up against to something like Tomoko, it just makes it look a lot more yellow, but it's definitely not terribly brassy, but you can definitely see that little bit of yellow tone to it, um, whereas this just, uh, Godiva, or Tomoko just kind of looks like a pale gold, and if you really wanted to t take a look and see what we've got, I'll put all four of these up against each other. These other two aren't super... They're not really totally close, but just so you get an idea. So there's all four there. If you want to see Tomoko, that's Godiva. I'll get up against that. So yeah, guys, that is everything that I got in the Zoya Earth Day sale. <sighs> that was a lot. I feel like... I probably could have put in one more order because I started seeing what everybody else was buying and I kind of wanted to get more, but to be honest... I don't... I just, uh... I wasn't super excited about, I don't know, I guess maybe because I'm getting into indies now, but I've just been kind of 
not super excited about getting Zoyas. At least not right now. I love having them in my collection. I like having them as staples in my collection. I always know that are there and I can go back to. Um, but I think right now I'm just so into indies and just seeing all the different types of finishes and stuff. And so right now I'm just, uh, I'm not as excited about Zoyas, especially considering their last couple collections have been kind of duds. And I just, I was talking about this on Instagram yesterday, but I was really disappointed in the summer collection. I was really excited when I saw the promo pics. I thought the collection was going to look really pretty and they were talking about these unicorn toppers. But then I started seeing people's um, live swatch and reviews of the collection like a week or two ago. And I just feel like this collection has been really boring. Like, I don't know how many more pinks and reds they can release in a collection. I mean, they all look pretty, but it, like I just feel like we've seen these same colors over and over. Like I saw Phoebe swatch the collection and she's comparing she's comparing the, the the summer colors to colors in the last two collections and I feel like this is what's happening I, I think OPI's had the same thing I don't know about SE because I don't follow them as as closely but I just feel like they're just repeating themselves like get out of break out of the box here guys like I just and the unicorn toppers to me I thought they looked pretty in the bottle but once they started putting them on the nails I just Oh, I don't know. I just was not excited about it. And it just could be that I've been diving into indies and now I'm trying, now I'm like a spoiled brat and I just, I'm like, I like indies now. And I always love Zoya. I'm going to always be, you know, down for Zoya, but just lately their collections have just been really kind of lackluster, to be honest. Um, so yeah, spoiler alert, I'm probably not going to be reviewing the summer collection unless I see a promo. I thought they were going to do their similar promo that they've been doing in the last couple collections, which was if you buy one sampler of six, you get the other one for free, but they're not doing that. The only thing they were doing is free shipping, and I cannot bring myself to spend $120 of my own money on that collection. If they were going to do a buy one, get one, and it was only $60 for all 12 of them, I was probably going to buy the whole set and review it for you guys, but if they're not going to do that and they're only and they're going to charge me full price for all 12 of those polishes, I'm not going to do it. I just can't I can't bring myself to spend that much money on those polishes cuz I just don't think not that they're not worth it. I mean, Zoya's are always worth it. I think the the formulas and they're beautiful polishes. Um, but for me personally in my collection, none of them look like polishes that I absolutely need. Even the purple, I'm just kind of like so that's a little bit of a rant, but I just wanted to let you guys know that I probably won't be reviewing the summer collection unless I happen to see that they do a promo. I probably won't be doing the summer collection this year. Um, it is what it is. So anyway, I'm going to losing sunlight. So that is that. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I want to see, let me know what you guys picked up that I might not have picked up or if you picked something up and you were pleasantly surprised or presently or, you know, disappointed in a polish that you picked up. Let me know down in the comments because I'm always, you know, wanting to, to find some new polishes for my collection from Zoya. Even though I'm not that excited about them right now, I'm always wanting to add to my collection with Zoya because I just think they're, if you're going to buy any type of mainstream polish, I think Zoya is the one to buy. And I think it's always good to have those base colors in your collection. So I'm never going to lose my love affair with Zoya. Just right now, I think we're both, we both need some space, I think is what the problem is. <laughs> Um, but anyway, I will stop rambling. I hope you guys are having a good one. I'll talk to you guys next time. Like I said, I am going to be on vacation, so I'm going to try and get this up beforehand. But if, uh, if not, then I'm back from vacation. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'll talk to you guys next time.